All right, welcome to the Spirit and Muscle broadcast. I'm Young Gerald, certified personal trainer. When's the last time you thought about blood health? You know, we're dependent on our blood literally every second of every day for our very lives. In this video, I want to break down five ways to keep your blood healthy. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back to the Spirit and Muscle broadcast. I'm Young Gerald, certified personal trainer. And let's start by asking what exactly is blood and what does it do? Yes, blood is the red liquid that circulates in your veins and arteries. The Bible says that the life of all flesh is in the blood. And that's very true. Blood carries oxygen and life-giving nutrients to your body's tissues and carries away carbon dioxide and other waste products from those same tissues. Blood is made up of four basic components, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma. Red blood cells make up 40 to 45% of your blood and are what carries oxygen throughout your body. White blood cells only account for 1% of your blood. White blood cells are a key part of your immune system. Platelets are tiny cells that make up less than 1% of your blood their role is to help the clotting process, stopping you from bleeding when you're injured. And plasma is the liquid portion of your blood and makes up the remaining 55 or so percent. It transports water and nutrients to your body's tissues. Blood health is important because if something is wrong with your blood, it can affect your entire body. The most common blood disorder is anemia affecting more than 3 million Americans. Anemia is where there are not enough red blood cells or the cells are not working correctly so you don't get enough oxygen throughout your body. It can be caused by iron or vitamin deficiencies. It can be brought on by an injury or illness or pregnancy or some medications. Treatments include blood transfusions, dietary changes, and medications that stimulate the production of bone marrow and new red blood cells. There's also a platelets disorder called hemophilia, which is a genetic condition caused by a lack of clotting factors in a person's blood, meaning their blood does not clot properly, causing excessive bleeding. Treatment typically involves replacement therapy where the patient gets infusions of the specific clotting factor they're missing. Blood clotting can also be a problem. A blood clot is a clump of red blood cells that have changed from a liquid to a gel-like state. Clotting is a necessary process that will protect you from losing too much blood if you're injured, but when a blood clot is formed inside of your veins, if it breaks free and travels to your heart or your brain or your lungs, it can be life-threatening. A blood clot affecting the brain is known as a stroke and a blood clot affecting your heart is what causes a heart attack. There are also blood disorders affecting white blood cells such as lymphoma, leukemia, and myelomas. Lymphoma is a type of cancer that occurs in white blood cells when they change and multiply rapidly. Leukemia involves the buildup of abnormal white blood cells in the bone marrow which interferes with its ability to produce red blood cells and platelets. Myelomas involve a buildup of plasma cells, a specific type of white blood cell, in the bone marrow, which also interferes with the development and function of other blood cells. Lymphoma, leukemia, and myelomas are types of blood cancer treated by chemotherapy, radiation therapy, surgery in some cases, and targeted drug therapy. Of course, all this is way out of my scope of practice as a personal trainer, but I believe there are things we can do today to improve our circulation and keep our blood healthy. And I'm going to give you five of them right now. Number one is good nutrition. Healthy blood starts with healthy eating. You want to eat a balanced diet with plenty of high protein foods, which is necessary for antibody production and blood clotting. 
Foods low in saturated fats decrease cholesterol levels and keep your blood and circulatory system healthy. Complex carbs and fiber will also help keep your cholesterol down. A diet low in refined sugars and processed carbs can help keep your blood sugar within healthy limits. High blood sugar uh, can lead to oxidation, which can damage cells and promote inflammation. Broccoli, fresh fruits, and green leafy vegetables all have different nutrients that are useful in blood cleansing. So it's no surprise the number one way to keep your blood healthy is good nutrition. Number two is exercise and stretching. Any exercise that gets your blood flowing will be beneficial. Remaining sedentary is the worst thing you can do for your blood and your overall health for that matter. Exercise improves circulation and the body's ability to take in and use oxygen. Once you're comfortable moving on to more challenging exercises, you'll see circulation improve even more. And stretching. With just a few minutes of basic stretching each day, you can drastically improve your blood circulation. So make an effort to get up once in a while, walk around, and stretch. Number three, drink plenty of water. I'm sure you guys are tired of me saying this in almost every video, but remember your body is up to 60% water and your blood is 82% water. When you're dehydrated, your blood volume decreases, which means your heart has to work harder. Also, your blood retains more sodium, making it harder to circulate. Dehydration also lowers blood flow and oxygen to your brain and your muscles. On the other hand, staying well hydrated avoids all these problems and will keep everything flowing smoothly throughout your body. Number four is to cut back on alcohol. Moderate alcohol consumption can be okay for your body, but many studies have recognized the connection between alcohol use and long-term damage to the circulatory system, high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke, to name a few. For most of us, moderate means no more than two drinks. Any more than that can lead to all kinds of damage. And the number five way to keep your blood healthy is nutritional supplements. Of course, I always recommend a good multivitamin to make sure your body's getting everything it needs in the way of vitamins and minerals, but certain other supplements really stand out when it comes to blood health. Omega-3 fish oil is known to promote cardiovascular health and improve circulation. Same with the antioxidants found in tea, and that goes for black tea and green tea. Turmeric is known to help strengthen red blood cell production and garlic may slow the buildup of plaque in the arteries, lowering the risk of blood clots, stroke, and heart attack. Supplement disclaimer, always ask your doctor before you tar start taking any new supplements if you have or suspect you have a health problem. Are you guys noticing a trend here? It seems that no matter what specific topic we're exploring, health and fitness seems to boil down to two main things. Number one, exercise and keeping active. And number two, eating healthy, putting the right things in your body. And this week, I'm giving away the Spirit and Muscle Glycemic Index Food Guide to help you on your journey to eating healthier. If you're not familiar, it's a PDF download with nutritional recommendations, meal planning ideas, and a list of 100 of the most common foods and where they fall on the glycemic index. It's free, it's my gift to you. To get your copy, go to spiritandmuscle.com forward slash GI. That stands for glycemic index. That's spiritandmuscle.com forward slash GI. The link is also in the description. Okay, that is it for this week's Spirit and Muscle broadcast. Thanks for joining me. Please like and share these videos if they're helping you. My goal is to help as many people as possible. Subscribe for more helpful and useful content. Like my Facebook page. Follow me on Instagram. All the links are in the description. That's all for now. God bless you and I'll see you in the next video.